Today we'll be taking a look in the book of Mark, chapter number 6. Mark, chapter number 6. And we'll be looking at um, verses 14 through 29. That's Mark chapter number 6, verses 14 through 29. Uh, my Bible has a subtitle or of that particular area, passage of scripture in my Bible. It's entitled, John the Baptist is Beheaded. So everybody already have in mind what this passage is about. John the Baptist is Beheaded. I would like to just share with this as a title, When the Truth Be Told. Can you just say, When the Truth Be Told? You know, you can end it however you will because some of us have been through some of those things when the truth be told. Uh, uh, unlike John the Baptist, we're still here. Uh, but as a uh, quick background to this particular lesson uh, as we go into here regarding John the Baptist. And uh, uh, it's a little testimony of, of John the Baptist. And if we can recall who he is and, and we remember who he is and he was the one that baptized Jesus. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Jesus saw him river at the uh, Jordan River and, and uh, John the Baptist recognized Jesus as being the son of God. And, and, John, and, and then Jesus told him that, you know, hey, you need to baptize me. John the Baptist said what? Uh-uh. Well, you need to baptize me. <laughs> you the one. Uh, so... Uh, that's one uh, part of the testimony, testimony we know about John. And also when John was out in the wilderness uh, out uh, uh, proclaiming the gospel, he was telling different ones the truth. He was telling them uh, what uh, they must do. Uh, I'll never forget the part in which he talked about the soldiers. You know, everyone came up to John the Baptist, Baptist and asked him, what must I do? What, what shall I do? And John the Baptist, uh, you know, and more specifically the soldiers, he says, here's what he says. And there's a purpose for that. He says, be content with your wages. <laughs> Let us know that soldiers won't get paid much anyhow. <laughs> a lot of them can't, they have to probably uh, supplement their income through, uh, uh, through some bad things. But he, uh, John the Baptist told the soldiers, be content with your wages. Uh, basically, be true to yourself in the job in which you have. And, and, uh, and so that was very uh, uh, special to me when I was in the military, for, for that being said. Uh, after that, I really stopped looking at my page and started doing my work. <laughs> uh, so I started doing the, doing the job that I had at hand, you know, making sure everybody else got paid. <laughs> you know, big books. <laughs> no. And... Um, uh, so John the Baptist, um, you know, was one out there um, telling people what what they must do and and, and um, uh, doing it according to um, to the purpose that God has for them. Now, of course, this is during the Old Testament time, okay? Because the New Testament time did not come until Jesus Christ shed His blood for all of us, okay? Uh, so therefore, that's just this is during that time, and, and there were laws. Uh, that were being held and everything, but John the Baptist was somewhat special. The Bible said that he was uh, he had he received the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Man, that man was tough. So he went out and and he preached it, preached the uh, the word of God, telling people what what they should be doing uh, to honor God, and uh, and everybody knew about John the Baptist. Clothes he wore. Uh, you know, food that he ate, uh, you know, and people liking him to Elijah uh, and, and, and any other old, old prophets. So that's a little bit of background of John the Baptist. One more thing. Now, John the Baptist uh, uh, was, uh, was the cousin of Joseph, right? Uh -huh. Jesus. Oh, no, thank you, thank you. Okay. All right. I'll make sure we all here, you know, in lockstep, okay? Uh, John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus. Uh, but that right there, that didn't have a play in anything, and that, that the truth about it, uh, other than the initial about the birth and everything. But, uh, but, um, but, but what, you know, in that we can see that the big thing was the work of God. That's what was important between the two, was the work of God. Yeah. You see, it wasn't about uh, the relationship that they had, that they had, uh, you know, uh, uh, as the 
their, with their parents, but it was about their godly relationship uh, that they were God. So let's ask a little bit about John the Baptist. And let's look at this right here in, in, uh, in this chapter number six of Mark, chapter six of Mark and verse 14. And, and basically when the truth be told. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad. And he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Look at 15. Others said that it is Elijah, and others said that it is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. Let's pause there. What has happened is that the writer here, and it talks about this in Matthew also, puts this right in the beginning and lets us know what regarding John the Baptist saying that he's risen. He's, he's come back. This is what the king is saying now. Why? Because the king has already beheaded him. So we're just starting this particular portion off as a, as a uh, I don't know how you, how you say it, as, as a thought pattern or, or um, uh, let us know in advance uh, that, that this right here is not John the Baptist who he heard of and, and about all these things going on. I don't know who he is, right? It's Jesus that's doing all these things. And that, you know, what, what, what this king heard, heard of and everything like that. It wasn't John the Baptist because at this time John the Baptist is dead. He was beheaded. So you see that this right here, king is quite superstitious. And then, then again, I think he believes in the resurrection, which is even greater, which is, which is good. Um, look at uh, number, number 16 here, and I'm going uh, to uh, portion this right here. Uh, but when Herod heard of thereof, he said, it is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. Uh, so he, he had all of this in, in, in his mind because... You know, let me put when a person has done something mean, you might know when somebody did something mean. You don't, okay. Uh, <laughs> when someone does something mean, then that, that person dies. The person who did something mean to dies. You know, that person that's mean is going to be so haunted. I'm going to use that word haunted. You know, uh, with that person and almost everything that they see, if not everything, it comes back at them. Yeah. Uh, think about what they should have, could have, and would have. Uh -huh. You know, instead of doing the right thing at first, you know, just apologize and they're doing just, uh, you know, the right thing. But they went on and, and just, um, and, and that's the sad thing when, when, uh, when funerals come and stuff like that and everybody all of a sudden, first of all, the, the person who dies is always a good person. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's always, it's always a good person, all right? And, and, and then, uh, say, I'm just, tell, just saying what I've been hearing, okay? Always a good person, good boy, and everything else. And then, uh, what, what happens is that uh, not, not, not to say about uh, possible victims of, 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 the, of the person that, that, you know, that have passed. Uh, so, so, the, so the thing is, is that uh, people do bad things sometimes, but there's always opportunity to, to fix it or to or to try to try to um, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, just try to fix the thing, you know, for forgiveness and all those things, you know. Uh, but here, this king was too late for this king. He had already beheaded John the Baptist, and, and 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 now all of a sudden, you know, he's looking at this, hearing this, and the only thing that comes to mind when he hear about the good, the, the different works that's happening and happening and miracles and stuff. He's thinking about John the Baptist, what he did, and probably what he should not have, have done. But yes, when the truth be told, we got to first of all tell it like it is. That's it. That's it. No, what do you call it? Watering down. No sidestepping. No throwing the brick and hiding the hand. No, no, just tell it like it is. Uh -huh. You see, when we tell things like it is, it's off of you. When you don't, it's a weight on you. It's a weight. And I'm quite sure all of us probably have been, been through that. Instead of just simply laying it out, tell it like it is. Be done with it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
the psychologists and everybody else, they'll tell you, just, just tell it. Uh, don't worry, don't hold that stuff in. Just tell it. But when it comes to the truth, just tell it like it is. That's what a, that's what a witness is anyways. A witness is somebody that's going to tell what they saw, heard, seen, everything else. going to tell the truth. Amen. You know, not what they think, but, but what they saw, what, what, what they know. And that's what they're going to tell. So here, John the, um, here, um, uh, John the Baptist became a witness. He told what he knew and what he saw. Not only that, but, not only that, but, but he told of the unlawful act. Let's take a look at it. In, six, in uh, 17, he says this right here. 17 through 19. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison. Why? For Herodias' sake. See, Herodias is, is this king's, is Herod's wife. But look, his brother Philip's wife, hold up. King Herod threw John the Baptist in prison for Herodias' sake. And this is, Herodias is his brother Philip's wife. For he married her. So, look at 18. For John has said unto Herod, what did he say? John the Baptist said it ain't right, King. It just ain't right to have your brother's wife. That's like incest. And, and, and through the reading of, of, of this, it was saying that, that this wife right here, Rodians, was actually their niece anyways. <laughs> they played it close to home. You see, what, what happened, and, and um, uh, all, all, all that was, with, and John the Baptist is one who just simply stood up and told it like it was, regardless of consequences. I know we think about consequences. But when it comes down to it, we got to come to a point where we tell it like it is. Uh -huh. Regardless of, of the consequences that may, that may come forth. As long as it's the truth. You see, when you think about Herodias and King Herod and him marrying his brother's wife, first thing that came to my mind is, is y and R. Y'all know what y and R is. Young and restless. <laughs> yeah. This is Hollywood. And all those soaps capsuled in these verses here. <laughs> look, look. Look, 18. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Number 19. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him. She was mad at him. Up there telling, telling her husband uh, that, that he shouldn't have married her and can't uh, and, and would have and look and would have killed him. But she could not. She, 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 look, she would have put a death warrant out on him. Yeah. A hit out on John the Baptist if she could have. Mm -hmm. But her being the king's wife and all. But she but she couldn't do that. Why? All because of the fact that he told the truth. Folks don't like it when you tell the truth. You know that, right? Amen. You know, look, when I'm in darkness, I don't want to see the light. Yes, sir. You know, because evidently I'm enjoying it in the darkness. Uh -huh. and, and, and when light comes, it, what, what the Bible says, what light does, it, it, um, it exposes. Yeah, exposes sin, exposes the darkness. That, that's what light does. Yeah. You see? And, and, and the thing is that the Bible says that we are children of light. I mean, where we go, we should be a little flashlight. Spread the light on, 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 on something. Uh -huh. Folks, you see it's coming. Here come the light. You know, the light is Jesus Christ inside of us. The Holy Spirit, you see. So, tell it like it is. Regardless of the consequences, as long as it's it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Secondly, this king had a fearful respect of John the Baptist. Now, I wanted to just really pay close attention to those two words. Fearful respect. Because when you talk about the word reverence, 
that's respect and fearful, revere, all these different things. And, and so he had this type of respect for John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, King Herod had a lot more respect for the preacher than a lot of, uh, a lot of folk these days. <laughs> and he was a king. So, you know, I just said that, but the thing is that we should have respect for one another anyhow. Amen. Across the board. Mm -hmm. Saved and unsaved alike. Amen. How else are we going to show the light of Jesus Christ? Amen. He had a fearful respect. Look at verse number 20. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a, what is that? Just, just a just man. And uh, what's that? Holy. And a holy man. You know, when you use those two words together, now you something else. John the Baptist was just, and we ain't just talking about just. You know how somebody say, oh, that's just, you know, we'd say something like that before. Just, you know, having no count, baby, right? You know, but no, he was just. He was righteous, yeah. right? And not only that, but also holy. The king recognizes this. And John the Baptist didn't have no credentials like all these priests that was uh, that was hanging around the king and, and, and carrying on, uh, you know the the the, uh, the Sanhedrin and all that stuff. You know, the, 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 the John the Baptist was an outsider, but yet he gained the trust, he gained the fear, he gained the respect of a king. That says something. Yes. That means that this king understood who John the Baptist was. He understood that John the Baptist was going to say what it say what it meant. You know, hear like say what he meant and mean what he said. Uh -huh. He had a fearful respect of him, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and a holy. But not only that, but also observed him. And another uh, portion I got in my protected what? protected him. The king. Somebody not even part of his little inner circle. So how did he how could he protect him? Probably told his people, his soldiers, everybody, keep your hands off of John the Baptist. Uh -huh. The Bible says, don't touch my anointed, nor do my servants any harm. So this king, he, he feared John. He, 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 he reverenced him or respected him. Look, look, look here. It goes on in, uh, here in the, 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 the king's uh, uh, birthday and a promise. Look at this right here in verse 21. Uh, he says, well, let me finish up with 20. He says, he observed him, and when he had heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. So he had the voice. He was able to really listen. This king was able to listen to John the Baptist and do it, uh, what's the word, happily. He'd be pleased to hear him. And even uh, when, when I think it was uh, Felix or someone or somebody who, who went to go hear uh, uh, Paul, uh, 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 Agrippa, that's who it was, Agrippa. And Agrippa heard him and then King Agrippa told Paul, thou almost persuaded me or convinced me to be a Christian. Paul didn't let it lay there. He didn't let it sit there. No, Paul had to get the last word in. Paul said, not only uh, did I almost persuade you or, or I, I wish that all of you receive Christ. Not just only you, King Agrippa, but everybody. Uh, so, Look at this right here. He says in verse 21, this birthday, it says, And when a convenient day was come, a convenient day, mm -hmm. that Herod, on his birthday, quite a convenient day, on his birthday, made a supper to his lords, his high captains, and his chief estates of Galilee. So he had this banquet like supper for his birthday, and, and all the big wigs were were there sitting around the table or however it is and, and they just they, 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 all of them are there and, and, and look at 22 and when the daughter of the said Herodias almost sound like legal terms going on here and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod 
Evidently, it wasn't no regular dance either. That pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. But the king was, he had to have been intoxicated. <laughs> For him to say, what, what did he say? Ask whatever you want, and I'll give it. He had to have been taken in. And uh, feeling good. And that's what happened. And, and, and uh, he got the, he got got all brave and stuff. Oh, he forgot about his wife. You see, he got all got all you know, all like you know, this is my kingdom. I can do what I want to do with this kingdom. Give it to whomever I want. Yeah, if he said that, he cut his eye off to his wife. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there was a, no, no, look, y'all y'all probably seen this before, y'all. Um, Y'all saw this, you know, y'all seen t-shirts and different saying said this right here. I'm the boss of my house. I'm the man of my house. I'm the boss. Okay. And then on the back side of the shirt, and my wife says so. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know, I wouldn't wear it though, but <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, it's not. It's not my wife. Uh, I like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> ouch! He said, "Ouch." <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Uh, so yes, um, he has his birthday, and and he brought all his friends, all the big wigs, all the people came on up, and then his his daughter, his 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 his, uh, his wife's daughter danced, uh, uh, danced, and everything, and then he was so pleased with the uh, with the dance. He said in twenty three, and he swore unto her. The king did. Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. All the way up into the half of my kingdom. Now, giving half means that it's about equal. Up to half of my kingdom. Now, I can't give you the throne, but I'm going to give you up to half of my kingdom. And, and, and um, look at 24. And she went forth and said unto her mother. Uh-oh, there she is again. It's Herodias. What shall I ask? And she said, What's that? The hand of John the Baptist. That was a mean woman. Yes, sir. I was going to try to do some, uh, some background check on Herodias. I got to read. I said, Let me close this thing here, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't want her coming after me. <laughs> it said that uh, she was married to his brother. And uh, she had the, uh, and, 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 um, and, and, and King Herod was married to somebody else. And, and so I guess maybe they got the eyes or something, you know, uh, on one another. Anyways, she, 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 she dumped uh, King Philip, she, uh, she, dumped, uh, she dumped him in order to get King Herod. King Herod got rid of his wife, and, and there you go, Hollywood all the way, y'all. <laughs> Just to handle tabloids back then, but we got one better than tabloid. We got the Bible. This is the truth. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, Herod uh, he uh, um, married her, and, and I don't know if he knew exactly what she was about, but she was she she was something else. Yeah. If you think that um, that that, that uh, the King Ahab's a wife or something, well, what's her name? Uh, uh, Jezebel, you think she was something? Huh? I tell you what, I think this woman here give her a run for her money. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but look, look at here, look at what happens here. Right here it says that she went to go ask her mother. She went to go check, to check with her mother. And what, what shall I ask? And, and she said, the head of John the Baptist. Man, that's, that's tough. And then 25, and she came in straightway with haste, didn't waste no time until the king. Then take no time for deliberation other than leaving and coming right back. And ask, saying, I will that you give me by and by uh, uh, at once in a charger the head of John the Baptist. Wow. Whoa. Talking about a death warrant instantly, just like that. No chance or no opportunity to stand and defend himself. Just like that. 26, and the king was exceeding sorry. 
Here we go, y'all. Pay attention to this. Now, he was sorry. Remember, he really respected John the Baptist. But he was really sorry. Yet, look at this. For his oath's sake. What is that saying? His word, right? Y'all remember back when me and you say, my word is my bond. bond. I don't know when you say that now, but me and I said, my word is my bond. It's on a handshake. It was on the word. But here, this oath is just like this. If he said it, then he's going to carry through with it. He's a king after all. For Yet for his oath's sake. What is a king? I mean, come on now. You expect a king, what he says he's going to do. Because a king is going to tell it like he is. A king is going to tell the truth. Yeah. A king is the head of state. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> president is too, though. <laughs> okay, let me get back here. Uh, he says right here in verse number uh, that it says that the king was exceeding sorry, yet for his oath's sake and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not look at this. He would not re reject or refuse her because of the people sitting around him, regardless whether it was fair or not. He would not have did it. Yes, See, I would call that peer pressure. Yep. A lot of times, amen, especially our children and stuff, they do stuff because of peer pressure. They join a gang, and in that gang, they, they're supposed to go and shoot up somebody. You know, they tell probably not to kill them, but just go and, and scare them. Go and do a, a, a robbery. Go and, do, go and steal a car. Go and do all these things. But the, but the sad matter is this right here. These days, amen, ain't nobody that's uh, uh, going to let someone take what, what belongs to them anymore. People fight back. Yeah. Now, amen, that good boy that, that we talk about is always laying across the pulpit in that, in that casket. We say it's a good boy. It's the one that went out there and did what he tried to do. We got to teach our children. We got to teach them young. Because the spirit pressure that's out there, y'all. Right. You know, you know grown ups got it. Look at this picture right here. If grown ups got peer pressure, then you know kids got peer pressure. And we got to teach our children. Don't fall for that stuff. You don't have to uh, uh, try to be loved by somebody else when you got your parents right there, when you got your family right here, yeah. you know? Uh, so the thing is, is that we can teach our children. That's what we got to do because the gangs and everybody else out there is trying to grab them. They're trying to grab them early. Let them know that they ain't getting in trouble. I, 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 I want to I wanna refute that. Yeah, they're going to get in trouble. And you know what? A lot of these princes are being built even more and more, and even for the younger generation. Under 17. Everybody ain't going to juvenile court. A lot of them just being bound over, going to jail. So yes, peer pressure. Look what this king did. He beheaded John the Baptist. Why? Because he said it. It's his oath. And, and, the, and, and plus, those other, uh, those other men that were sitting around at the table, they heard me too. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. But we know that God has things laid out and in some sort of a plan. We don't know the fullness of it, but what we have to do is comply with what God has for us. John the Baptist was not afraid to tell it like it was. So when the truth be told, things do happen. And so now he goes on and and here, uh, John the Baptist is beheaded in 27. Immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison. Look at 28. And brought his head on a charger or the silver platter and gave it to the damsel. And the damsel gave it to her mother. Remember, it's the king's birthday. The young girl came and danced for him, him and his guests, in a very seductive manner, and he fell for it. He let his flesh take control. Then he decided to tell her, give her a promise, ask whatever you want, and I'll give it to you, up to half of my kingdom. Smart young lady, uh, <laughs> or she just knew her mom. Let me go check with mom first. Don't you know that's one thing that, amen, our children probably need to do? 
Let's check with mom first. And dad. Before they make these big decisions. Check with them. Is, is this right? Is this okay? And a little bit of goes a long way. So, so there's one thing that she did. She went to go check with her mother. And she knew about her mother. She knew who she was. She knew about her. They probably talked a lot. They probably texted one another and stuff. She was one end of the castle and she on the other end. And no drop calls. So the head of John the Baptist was brought out to the damsel and she turned around and gave it to her mother. She gave a gift to her mother, the head of John the Baptist. And she probably said, finally, 29 lastly. And when his disciples, talking about John the Baptist, when his disciples heard of it, they came, took up his corpse, and laid it in a tomb. Don't you know when the truth is told some good things happen and some bad things happen. When the truth be told like John the Baptist something bad happened. But we say it was bad to him. But what John the Baptist would tell us is that he he's ready and willing to die for his Lord at any time. What we're willing to say is that, uh, like John the Baptist, we need to tell the truth, and we're going to tell the truth regardless of the circumstances. Then we're going to stand, uh, stand tall. Ephesians tells us to stand anyways. When we've done everything that we can, just stand. We've got to do it. Amen. Jesus is the truth the Bible lets us know. Amen. So we've got to tell it about Jesus. We've got to tell about Jesus. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta know Jesus, and then go and tell somebody about Jesus, about the one that died for you, Amen. about the one that gave His life up for you, about the one that is the God's Son who, who God sent for us, the one that shed His blood for us on the cross, Amen. the one that was buried for us in a tomb, the one that rose the third day morning for us out of the tomb. The one that's going to come back one day mm -hmm. for us. That's what telling the truth is about. about. That's, what, that's what it means about the truth be told. Is that he's coming back. And he's coming back for all of us who, are been, who have been blood bought. Regardless of our walk. Now some of us don't walk too good, okay? Some of us walk really well. I'm talking about in this, in this walk, in this road, on this road of Christianity. But the, but the important thing is, you're on the path. You're on the road. That's the important thing. Growth is a thing that comes that we've got to continue just to work at in our studies, in talking to brothers and sisters. That's where, the, that's where that comes at. So we don't expect someone to, to, be, to be walking on water when they get saved. We don't expect nobody to walk on water after they've been saved for 40, 50 years. But we do expect each and every one of us to declare the truth to somebody who doesn't know it. That's the gospel message. The door to church is open, let us stand.